I needed to upgrade, right? So I attended a finishing school and um, at the end of the year, my maths mark went up by like 2%. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, um, this is the thing though. This is the thing though. The lowest aggregate that was taken the year I was applying. <laughs> I mean, yeah, at SME. So um, this gentleman answers. And uh, so I ask about my application, uh, tell me with. So that analogy that I used at the beginning of the testimony, in terms of if you take a shortcut to get to your destination, very, very often you get there unprepared. You'll get there, yes, but you'll get there, I am now in what I'm doing. And uh, that's the first part of this testimony done and dusted. That's my. Okay, cool. <laughs> so welcome to part two. I obviously got carried away in part one and uh, took a very long time to get to the end of the story. But we're going to cut straight to part two. And part two is my, I called it my f spiritual, physical journey, um, which is music. And I call it a spiritual, physical journey because it's in the spiritual part of my life, yes but it very much is a physical journey because it, it, it involves music and singing. And um, so this part of my testimony starts off at the age of 14 and um, there'll be a fast track in the middle, don't worry. <laughs> so I started um, leading praise and worship. Well, not leading, but I joined a praise and worship team for the first time in my home church at the age of 14 not out of choice uh for those who don't know i'm a pastor's kid so uh what happened to the pastor's children in my home church was we were like ushered onto the stage <laughs> whether you could sing or not you had to be in the praise team <laughs> and so i landed up in the praise team pre-puberty which meant that my voice had not dropped yet and so i sang soprano for the first few years <laughs> of my life in a praise team and i literally sang soprano for i think two or three years because my voice just hadn't broken yet and i don't even think i could even sing back then but the uh, the point of the matter is um, i sang soprano for a few years and then started uh, going through the whole voice deepening process so ended up singing alto for a few years if there's anyone from philadelphia sanctuary pmb shout out you know the journey that I've been through. <laughs> um, yeah, sang alto for a few years and then eventually uh, got to puberty years, if you want to call it. And uh, my voice deepened and ended up uh, being the highest voice in the tenor range. Um, and uh, for, yeah, I don't know how many years it was. I had been in the praise and worship team and had learned to sing i think uh people tell me i can sing i'm not sure that i can but <laughs> um so yeah so basically being from being pushed into the praise and worship team i developed a passion for praise and worship i developed a passion for serving in church i developed a passion for for seeing the role that you get given as a member of the worship team in that essentially you are ministering with the the lead pastor of whichever church you're in um and when you think about it you get given as a praise and worship team i think in many churches almost a third of the entire service to lead to to that whole third the time that's given to you is basically under your control and what you do with it is you have to prepare the platform you have to prepare the atmosphere you have to prepare people's hearts you have to prepare their minds you have to get people ready to receive the word of god and that is in no capacity a small thing whatsoever there are many layers to the job of, of a worship leader but just the fact alone that you're given almost a third of any service time no matter how long your service is it could even be more than that if your service times are shorter 
you get given so much responsibility. And in many churches, like the church I come from at home, a praise and worship leader leads the whole set by themselves. So in the church we're currently in, Christian Revival Church, shout out. Whoop, whoop. Uh, we uh, are fortunate enough that we have many people who volunteer in the music ministry. We have many, many vocalists. We have a fantastic band. And so you get given maybe a single song in a set to lead, right? And, uh, and in those four or five minutes, you do the most and you, and you make sure that you prepare to, 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 to not flounder physically by singing the correct notes and things. But the pressure is reduced in that you, you have those five minutes to make sure that you, you, you keep the spirit and the atmosphere in the church where it is before you give over to the next person. Unless obviously the, you're the last vocalist to sing before a uh, pastor comes up. But um, for many, many years of my life, once I started leading praise and worship at my home church, you are given the entire set to lead. And you have 15 to 20 people behind you for five or six songs for 20 to 25 minutes, all depending and plus 500 people of, in the congregation and your leaders and your pastors, all depending on you as a single person to get them from a place of chatting and oh, we've just come to church in the morning, deep into the throne room of God. And I promise you, it is one of the most daunting tasks you will ever, ever experience in your life because at the end of the day, when the 25 minutes, 20 minutes is up, if the atmosphere is not prepared, if you haven't led people into the throne room, if you haven't given people the opportunity to let go of themselves, if you haven't given the people the opportunity to freely worship, if you haven't come prepared, then there's almost like a stagnant spirit in, in the house. And praise and worship is that release. It's supposed to be that, that, that knife through all the trials and tribulations of life, if you want to call it that. If you want to call it that. When, when, when people come into church, when people walk into the auditorium of any, of any given church on a Sunday, and, uh, and they walk in with heavy shoulders, with the burdens of life on their back, when, 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 when people have lost loved ones during the week, when they've gone through these heavy, heavy, heavy emotional experiences and they get to church on a Sunday morning and, and you've just nonchalantly prepared a list and, uh, and you pitched up on a Sunday and you haven't rehearsed or you haven't given it the adequate attention, then after 20, 25 minutes, people are just standing staring at you. And then when, when the pastor gets on the platform, there's no spiritual foundation for him to take off from to get people out of the rut that they've been in for so long. And so a lot of people don't appreciate how much pressure there is on, on a team and, and, and on individual members of a team in, to be right with God, number one, in order to be able to lead people in praise and worship. And secondly, just, just to be able to handle the daunting task of leading praise and worship. And so this was my life for for. Yeah, from the age of 14, right up until 2018, when I had to move to Pretoria. And so I had known nothing but to serve three services every Sunday from the time I was born, basically. <laughs> three services every single Sunday from the time I was born. 2018, I got given the opportunity, obviously, after finishing my previous degree, to move up to Pretoria to pursue pharmacy. And um, my sister had been up here previously. Uh, studying and she had been at CRC for the years that she was here and is still a member by the way <laughs> just for anyone who's wondering but um, so when I arrived my first my first obviously instinct or reaction was to look for a church because I know nothing but to be in church that was it's just my life um, and so when I got here the first thing I had to do was to look for a church and so naturally the first place I went to was the church that my sister was at because she was here and that just happened to be CRC and so I still remember the first week I was here got here on Monday I think registration was and uh, went through the week looking at googling all the churches in Pretoria and looking at okay I'm gonna go visit this I'm gonna go visit this one I'm gonna go visit this one to try and see where I'm gonna fit in and Sunday came and I accompanied my sister to church and the moment, I kid you not, 
the moment i promise you i am not exaggerating and you can probably see it from the beam on my face the second i walked through the doors at christian revival church and heard the music that emanated from the platform i was at home and people think i'm exaggerating when i say this but from that very first moment from the very first song i heard from the very first encounter i had with music at Christian Bible Church, I knew that was where I needed to be. And it was no sooner than the very next week I was at rehearsals auditioning to be on the praise and worship team. And uh, later on, I thought, maybe I've rushed this. Maybe I should have looked elsewhere. But when you get that, it was almost like it was almost like a punch to my stomach. From, I kid you not, a lot of people think I'm joking when I, say, when I say this, but literally from the moment I walked through those doors, I knew that I was at home and I knew that I was in the right place and I knew that I had to serve God here because this, is, this was the next level um, of my journey in, in my career as a, as a worship leader and as a praise worship leader. And um, a, a large part of, of the last few years at home that I don't speak about was how unhappy I became in with where I was um, because I did feel like I was stagnating, like there were many things in my life that just weren't working together, like I just wasn't getting anywhere in life and I actually started to experience a decline in my spiritual life. Um, and it was almost as if God literally just grabbed me by the head and translocated me to where I would, I would instantaneously see a change in, in, in the outlook that I had in terms of my spiritual life and and that made the world of difference to my demeanor to to my character to everything that that made me who i am and and so people see me as this bubbly person as as this character filled leader and as this person who's able to 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 just i don't know people say i i i, I I'm welcoming and I'm easy to talk to and but it wasn't always the case and, and I, I genuinely do attribute it to the, the many skills and, and lessons and things that I've learned from 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 literally the second I walked in <laughs> to to that auditorium in the east and um, there are many 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 lessons that I've learned on this journey but the two most critical are perseverance and patience because what had happened was like I said, no sooner than that very next week after I walked in, I was auditioning. But little did I know, I was not going to be able to actually serve because of the circumstances that I was going to find myself in. Financially, I didn't have the money to be able to attend rehearsals and to be able to attend training and to be able to, to attend the minimum amount of services that are required of you when you do become a volunteer in the music ministry. And, and so February right up until June, July, I think it was, I couldn't serve and I was the most uncomfortable person out of six and a half thousand people in that auditorium I single-handedly probably was the most uncomfortable person because I had never known the life of sitting in in and amongst the congregation as a congregant because all I had known from the age of 14 was to serve was to sing was to be involved even in any capacity and so um, so I really really struggled I really really struggled and um, God being good, I eventually decided that uh, the little money that I was getting was no more going to be an excuse. And uh, I, I got myself to, I had to audition again, got myself to the audition, uh, obviously, not obviously, but got accepted <laughs> into, the, into the choir. And, um, and yeah, dream week of 2018 was when I finished my probation and served for the first time. And a year later, after much, much, much training and patience and perseverance, obviously my goal was, and is still, still my goal, to be the best vocalist that I can be. And, uh, and in terms of the linear progression of things was to progress from being in the choir to being a backup vocalist, to being a lead vocalist. and uh, And, it took no sooner than an entire year, um, an entire year of patience, dedication, persistence, praying to God that this is the right thing, praying to God that I'm in the right place, 
that I find myself in the right home, that I'm not going to put in all this work only to be taken out by something small because at the end of the day, if, if I'm not in the right place, God is gonna move me. And uh, it's been a trying journey of perseverance and patience and perseverance and patience and working, like we said, because waiting is not a stagnant process. Waiting doesn't mean sitting and doing nothing. Waiting means improving the skill that you've been given, improving the gift that you've been given so that you can ultimately offer back to God something that is of, of, of excellence at the end of the day. And no sooner than a year later, um, I've been blessed enough with the opportunity to be able to, 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 to be a vocalist at this wonderfully awesome, I don't, I don't even know how to describe it, church that I find myself in with the best leaders in the music ministry I could have ever asked for in the universe with the best lead pastors. Uh, and it's just falling in love with the vision and the mission of the church and, and finding myself so deeply rooted and so comfortably at home that I cannot see myself anywhere else. And I thank God for that because like I said, if, if, if you're going to commit to something and, and put so much energy into it, only to be ripped out of it again because it wasn't where you're meant to be, it's a very, it's a very daunting prospect to try and think of. And so I, I thank God that I, I genuinely do feel the most grounded that I've ever felt in my life. And um, although Pretoria was meant to be temporary as a study home, I do see myself here for a long time. And um, I suppose the only time I would move is if, is if God asked me to move. Um, and so, yeah, that's my testimony in terms of music is that um, I waited a very, 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 very long time to be happy, to find myself in a place where I don't question God anymore in terms of how long I have to wait to eventually see something that I have seen as a vision and as a goal for my own life and have been promised by God to eventually achieve, but needing to wait and needing to work and needing to trust God to get you there after having prepared you so that you can appreciate the goal and the final blessing that he has for you, which is the achievement of your purpose in life. And um, yeah, that essentially is, is my testimony. And it's not over yet, not by a long shot, not by a long shot. You will never be perfect. We strive for excellence, but we are never perfect. And so um, there's still many, many, many years, many, 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 many years of building my gifts, of serving diligently, humbly, and um, of just being the very best that I can be in both my career that I'm going into and also my career in music in the house of God. And uh, just lastly, people always ask me if I've ever considered using my, using my talents outside of the house of God in music. There's nothing wrong with that, but I, never knew anything other than using my gifts in the house of God. And so I always believed that I was given the ability to do what I can do to serve the people of God. And so I've never had, I've never had a, a I've never had the motivation to do music outside of, of the sphere of serving people, outside of the sphere of uplifting people, outside of the sphere of giving people something to hold on to. When you sing the lyrics of a song, you're ministering to people. Like I said earlier, you minister on the platform with the pastor of your, of your congregation. And so singing power over people, singing victory over people, singing deliverance over people, giving people words to sing when they don't have the words to sing. These are all some of the very, I call them small parts of this bigger, this bigger, uh, responsibility that we have is just giving people something to hold on to giving people something tangible something physical something that they can hold on to for their christianity because a lot of it is is abstract in a lot of ways christianity is abstract we believe in a god who we can't see right faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things unseen we don't see we don't feel we don't hear a lot of our a lot of our walk in Christianity. And so music is something tangible, it's something we can hear, it's something we can see. The words resonate, the lyrics of songs resonate with us. And, and in any given congregation, as a worship leader, as a part of a band, even if you're a musician, you are given the task of delivering that to people. And so, yeah, we, don't, <laughs> we do not take that for granted at all. 
because you stand in the gap for a lot of people and uh, you are the bridge for a lot of people to enter into the throne room and into the the the, the holy of holies and and that is a responsibility that we do not take lightly and uh, and so we have to live our lives very very subject to the holy spirit and to the word of god so that we do not step out of line and so that we do not put ourselves before the mission and before the responsibility that we've been given, which is to serve people and to give people something to hold on to. And so that is my testimony. Uh, thank you. I've been speaking for very long. Um, but yeah, I hope that I hope that someone has taken, if, if it's those two things, perseverance and persistence that you've taken from today, I really, in, in both testimonies of my academics and in my music journey, if there is something that you're waiting on God for, if there is if there's something that you're waiting to achieve, if there's something that you if there's a door that you're waiting for God to open for you, it took me six years to get accepted into pharmacy. It took me two years of not singing to eventually be given the opportunity to sing. Um, before those two major areas of my life were restored again. And so the waiting period and the, 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 the period where I had to be persistent and diligent and serve without complaining and, and, and essentially work on everything that I needed to perfect internally and physically to be able to achieve those two end goals. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. And if you know that you are within the will of God for your life, it will come. I promise you it will come. And so if those are the two things I want to leave with you today, it's just persistence and patience. Persistence and patience. And pray. Pray, 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 pray. And God will come through for you. Amen.